and let me share my screen. And well, good evening. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I am a COO of uh, 3D Bear, uh, 3D Bear Inc. Uh, I myself am headquartered in the U.S. I'm just outside of New York City, and here it's 8:30 in the morning. So that's kind of the miracle of, um, you know, of technology, right? Uh, we can be across the world and still communicate. And what we're going to be talking to you is about uh, really augmented reality and a little bit about the metaverse. Um, and you know, what you see on the screen right now are really two different views of um, two different types of technology that are involved in the metaverse. On the left, you see a boy with goggles on and you see essentially what he's seeing through the goggles. Now that's virtual reality. In virtual reality, you're in your own world. And there's actually a lot of virtual reality where you need goggles, um, which are uh, which can be relatively expensive, especially especially if they're interactive goggles. Um, but there's a lot of um, there's there's a growing number of instances where people have created virtual realities that you can see, you know, directly through a computer and, and uh, you interact with them with a mouse and. Um, you know, one one of the great creation packages for that type of virtual reality is a is something called Wanda VR, W O N D A VR, and we actually use that a lot at 3D Bear for uh, for vocational training. So uh, so virtual reality is something where you are in a completely different world and you're interacting in that world and you can't see the real world outside. In augmented reality, generally, you're looking through the camera of a mobile device. So that's really on the right. If you if you uh, consider that, you're looking through the camera, in, in this case, of a uh, of a phone, but it could be a tablet or, or some other device, and you're adding to it or you're augmenting it. So you're placing items, you know, in the field of vision. And through that, you're creating stories or your kids are creating stories or your classes are creating stories. And we're primarily going to be talking about using augmented reality in order to unleash the creativity in kids and help them learn deeply. So I hope that answers uh, some of the questions that people had about um, augmented and uh, virtual reality and the metaverse. And um, and I see somebody uh, typed in a question, you know, can I watch this from a laptop? You can watch this uh, webinar from a laptop. Uh, you cannot run 3D Bear from a laptop. Uh, that only run, runs on mobile devices. We'll get into that in a, in a few minutes. Um, but you can watch the stories that people have created from a laptop because the stories are, um, are generally... Um, are generally in the form of photos or videos. So, um, so I hope that that answered answered your question there. Okay, so uh, so who's 3D Bear? Uh, 3D Bear is a company out of Finland. Um, here are uh, some of the, the people who've been involved in creating and and uh, supporting 3D Bear. Uh, most of the team is based in Finland. Uh, Divya Bot is uh, is located. Uh, in India, and uh, Junaid Ali is actually located in Pakistan. So, uh, and and I'm I'm in the U.S. So it's kind of a worldwide organization. And 3D Bear was really formed um, because uh, you know the uh, the principal uh, Yusi Kayala was was working in the Finnish government um, to promote the use of 3D technologies in businesses. And what he found is that people in businesses really didn't understand the power of 3D technology. And he felt, you know, this is something that kids growing up should really be working with from the, you know, from, from a very young age. So he teamed together with uh, Pekka uh, Salakano. Um, and the two of them are really the two founders of 3D Bear. So they created 3D Bear in order to give uh, kids, kids as early as five years old, and through say um, 
uh, vocational school and and high school, uh, kids the opportunity to work with 3D media in order to create their own stories. And these are uh, capabilities that they're going to be using for the rest of their lives. So as an organization, um, uh, yes, okay, there's a question. Did you mention Wanda, Wonder VR? It's actually Wanda, W-O-N-D-A VR um, uh, for, uh, for virtual reality. And then uh, and there was another question, uh, can we get the recording for this webinar? And uh, <laughs> so I don't have a 100% answer to that. We are recording the webinar, as you can see, and we will post the webinar on our website. I don't know if we're going to send a link to everybody who's registered, but if you go to our website, www.3dvr.io, which we'll, I'll show you uh, shortly, or it's on the bottom of the screen. Um, if you go to that website in about a week, you'll be able to... Um, you'll be able to see the, the webinar live, or sorry, the, the archive of the webinar. So anyhow, so 3D Bear has been recognized by, by a number of organizations as really a, a key component, a foundational component in using XR in education. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation recognized 3D Bear as one of the top eight companies in XR, which is the term uh, that was used for both augmented reality and uh, virtual reality until the term metaverse really took over. Um, uh, 3D Bear has been evaluated for educational content by the Education Alliance in Finland, and they were certified as being a high quality pedagogical um, application. And it was also evaluated by a not for profit in the US called Common Sense, and it and became a, a top pick for learning. And then we've been integrated in major platforms. Uh, Microsoft recommends us, Apple recommends us, and we're in the Google program as well. So, um, you know, so we have been, been recognized uh, by a number of organizations. And I just, you know, I'm going to do a demo of 3D Bear in one second, but I wanted to show you uh, these two examples first. And actually, I, I don't know that I remember to share uh, sound. So let me just come off this for a second and um, go back to share screen. I'm going to share sound and... There. Okay. And we're back to sharing screen. So in the first example, that a teacher may be teaching a lesson in biology to her students about genetics. And we all know that there's recessive genes and dominant genes. And the uh, the dark hair in sheep happens to be a dominant gene and white hair um, happens to be a recessive gene. So the students were asked to show that they understood the concepts of genes dominant and recessive. And so um, so one of the children built this diagram to show that the, the parents, one's dark and one's light, their first generation all are going to be dark. And in the second generation, if those if those sheep mated, then you would get three, you know, if they you get three quarters of the next generation would be dark and one quarter would be light because they'd have the, the, the two recessive genes. And then they'd be asked to explain that in front of the class. So that's an example where, you know, it's one thing as a parent or as an educator for you to be telling students information or requiring them to read a textbook, but it's another thing entirely for the students to be creating things on their own where they have to, to you know they have to analyze they have to think they have to create and take pride in something that they're going to be showing to the rest of their class and then there's another example on the right um here's uh i mean i i love this girl um you know a young girl uh showing uh how she's mastered the concepts of three-dimensional shapes so i'm going to play this video and hopefully you can hear it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sai Sanjana Patro. Today, I'm going to tell you about 3D shape, which I explored with my ma'am in my class. This is a cube and this is a square-based pyramid. Cube has six faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. It has eight vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it has 12 edges. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Square based pyramid has 5 faces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It has 5 vertices. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it has 8 edges. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Examples are Eiffel Tower as square based pyramid. Cube, uh, dice has cube. Thank 
So I just I just love her enthusiasm. And that's the kind of enthusiasm that you get with kids when they're creating things that they're really proud of. So um, so I'm going to show you I'm going to actually, you know, go and and demonstrate 3D Bear in just one second. And and and, and I'm going to be using it. But um, in the meantime, you know, so here's like two tasks that uh, that you might um we might have students do. So one is for young students, um, you know, have them show items that begin with a certain letter and label them with that letter. And then, um, and then another one that actually I do all the time. And my kids act, my kids hate it when I do this. Cause it's like dad, nobody likes your dad jokes, but, um, but I love to create dad jokes in 3d bear. So, uh, so an example of a dad joke, is um you know the question what did one wall say to the other and then the answer is i'll meet you at the corner so um so let me now um stop sharing okay and i'm going to now share um share my uh my device so you know what you can see is that this is basically, um, you know, my phone, okay? Um, I'm using an iPhone. Uh, 3D Bear runs on iOS devices and it runs on Android devices. So this is my phone and uh, 3D Bear is an app and you can see here on my phone, uh, the app 3D Bear, uh, it's a very colorful bear paw and it's kind of a red icon and you can download this on either the uh the iPhones you know the iOS uh Apple Store or on Google Play and I'm going to uh click on 3D Bear and uh you know 3D Bear naturally goes into this format where uh you can see other th things that people have created but what I'm going to do so I'm going to click on this plus on the bottom because that's really where you're going to be creating a 3D bear, and that's going into the 3D bear itself. So, um, so I clicked on the plus, and I mean you can kind of see what I'm looking at right now is I'm just looking through the camera of my device, you know, into my room, and I'm going to augment the reality um, by. Uh, you know, by creating a scene, and I'm going to create a scene that looks. Uh, I'd, I'd mentioned earlier. Let's say I wanted to create a scene because I'm responsible for showing things that begin with different letters, and so um, I can place in my scene. Um, you know, any of the these. There's about 500 different items here as I'm scrolling through them that I can place in my scene. Um, and then there's 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 additional items as well. So I'm going to say that um, I'm responsible for doing things that begin with the letter C. So I go to animals here and there's a cat and I want to place a cat in my room. So I click on it and uh, you see this um, green check mark until I until I press that. I can kind of move the cat around. I'm going to click on the check, and there it is. Um, and now, even if I move the camera, the cat stays still, and this cat happens to be a little bit of animated. Now, I, there's a lot of different things I can do with the cat. I can use one finger to drag that the, the, the cat around, okay? I can use two fingers to pinch to make the cat larger or smaller, okay? Um, I can't, there's a series of things on, on the bottom, which I can also do with the cat. Um, uh, these are different operations. And so I could change the color. Um, I can, I'm going to just rotate. So I clicked on rotate. I could rotate by 90 degrees in any direction I want to. Okay. Or by using a finger, um, you know, I can, I can rotate a lot finer. So I, I want to do things that begin with the letter C. So there's my cat. And now I'm going to go back to my objects here on the left. I'm going to click on that. And uh, lo and behold, uh, crocodile and chicken also begin with C. So I'm going to click on crocodile. Okay. And it's a little bit small. I think crocodiles are bigger. So now I have a crocodile and I have a cat. And um, 
let me now go to, um, let's see, is there any sporting items that begin with a C? A coach, okay? Um, I'm going to add a coach, okay? And so I now have a coach, a cat, and a crocodile. And now I just want to label what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to these objects again, and I'm going to go to letters and numbers and these objects these things all begin with the letter c so i'm going to tap the letter c i'm going to put a c up there i'm going to rotate it because it's a little bit in there let's see there's a c i'm going to change the color i'm going to make my c pink and now i want to share this so i have my scene and if I tap this circle down here on the bottom, that scene now goes to my photo roll. If I'm a student and I'm in a class, I can also share this with my class, okay? If I've logged in as a student. So I've shared my scene um, as a photo, but I could also share my scene as a video. If I hold down that circle, um, I can annotate the video, and it's picking up my voice as I'm talking about the video. So here are all my things that begin with the letter C. I have a coach, I have a cat, and I have a crocodile. Oh no, don't eat me, Mr. Crocodile. Boom. And there's, there's, there's my video. So let me now come out of that mode, and I'm going to erase that scene. And actually, I'm going to go back to... Um, originally and just so that you, you understand there's there's a you know when you first go into 3d bear you have this this menu on the bottom and so i could change my profile i could uh log in or i can log out um i have it by this uh on the, all the way on the right there's a series of lesson plans that i have access to so i can i can see different things that i can do with lesson plans uh the home key um you know, takes me to the things that other people have done. The uh, search allows me to search for things that, um, so so I can search for things, people have done things about their favorite color, okay? Um, or other, other things that I can search for. Or the, the main thing that you're going to be doing is this plus key, and that plus key gets you into create mode. Now, the other one that I said, is we're going to do this dad joke what did one wall say to the other so um so i had mentioned that you have access to about 500 different items in 3d bear okay but also you uh, you have access to millions of items if you're a, a registered user you have access to millions of items that are in this repository called sketchfab so if i didn't have a wall in 3d bear i can go into search and I can just type in wall. Okay. And so now, as it turns out, there's three walls that are listed in, in, in 3D Bear already. And here are other things that have been tagged as walls that I that that I could choose. So I'm just going to actually choose one of the walls that's that's in 3D Bear. Um, so here's one wall. And then I'm going to choose the other wall here, and I'm going to rotate that. I'm going to bring it a little bit forward, and I'm going to make that bigger. Okay. Okay, so I have these two walls, and so now I'm going to put in my dad joke. I'm going to go here. I'm going to cancel. I'm going to go to the letters over here. And before, I just typed in one letter. But now I'm going to type in text. So I'm going to type in, what did one wall, oops, I have to spell it right. I'm going to make this a little bit low. What did one wall say to the other. Okay. 
And as you see, I, I can change the size, I can reposition the text. Okay, I can, uh, I can rotate it, I can change the color, but I'm going to leave it like that. So what did one wall say to the other? And then in another place, um, I'm going to say, meet you in the corner. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to make that larger and maybe rotate it so it's a little bit easier to see. There, meet you in the corner. OK? OK, so now I have my dad joke. What did, or uh, maybe I have to move this a little bit more over so it's not as readily viewable, OK? So now I can make a video of this and I'm going to hold down that circle to make a video. And here's my dad joke as I, what did one wall say to the other? Meet you in the corner there. And there's my video, which I can play. Hopefully you can hear the sound as I play this. What did one wall say to the other? meet you in the corner and there's there's um you know there, there's my dad joke so uh these items that you do in 3d bear are stored in your photo roll on your device so if i go to photos here and you can see here on the last three are the three things that i just did here i'm going to go first there's my um there's my photo and i can share that to social media um, I could email it to somebody. Um, I could post it to Google Classroom. I could post it to um, a Google slide, you know, whatever I want to do with anything I could do with any other photo, I can do with this. And then here's another one. Uh, there's the video. And, you know, and here's one wall say to the other. And here's the other video. So again, just as um, you, you know, you can do with any photos or any videos, you know, you or your students can then share these. So I'm going to now um, come out of sharing my device. Now you've seen, okay, so now you've seen an example of, of, of 3D Bear. And let me share screen again to go into here. So the, these were just two examples. And let me just check the questions. Does the color element work on the Sketchfab fab objects as well? Yes, color works on everything, but it's like it's one color. It shades everything about the object. Um, so, but yes, it does work on the sketch. So will the get participation certificate? Um, no, we will not. There's no real participation certificate here. Um, so, uh, so no, sorry. Um, it, this is just a webinar that we're doing as a uh, kind of as, as a service. So, um, so, and then the question is, is how, you know, question, how do we make a video? Do you remember um, as I was showing, as I was creating a scene, there was that circle. Um, and if you hold down that circle, it automatically creates a video. Now, once you have a video, you can also use editing software um, to further edit that video. Or if you have a series of photos, you can combine them into a video using something like iMovie or some other um, editing software. So, um, you know, so let me just go back to the presentation. So these were just two demo tasks that we did, um, just to show you how 3D Bear works. And um, I just want to show you a bunch of other examples of what other people have done. So here's an example from kind of a vocational application. So let me. In this exercise, the student utilizes augmented I'm hoping reality that you can hear sound. for practicing retail product placement. First, the teacher creates a classroom for the students on the 3D Bear website and adds students to the class one by one. After getting the task description, the student opens the 3D Bear app and signs in by using their own name 
and the class ID given by the teacher. The 3D models used in the task can be found in the app by searching for Urheilu esille pano. The task is to do retail product placement in a sports context, which the student can practice by making, for example, symmetrical and asymmetrical compositions. The task can easily be done at home on the student's own desk but the school can also provide facilities for executing a bigger showroom entity. So I'm going to stop this there, but you can see that um, that having students demonstrate their competence through creating videos or scenes in 3D Bear is a way of using 3D Bear. Um, in this exercise. OK, um, here's an example from a visual art. So students created, uh, well, you know, something. let me let me show the video rather than go, me go through and describe. What you see here is the world's first exhibition for anamorphic art executed in augmented reality. The exhibition was done by Keudas Pekka Hallonen Academy as well as Tartu Kunsti School, and the collaboration between these two schools was facilitated by 3D Bear. The students processed shared themes through their art and created three-dimensional art pieces, either with traditional methods or with the help of 3D modeling. Physical art pieces were then transferred to augmented reality by 3D scanning. The exhibition was opened in spring 2021, but it is still accessible for everyone in the 3D Bear app. With the help of the 3D Bear app, each exhibition visitor can curate their own exhibition experience in their backyard or the nearest public park. So, I mean, what you can see in this video is these were actually vocational students in upper high school or or even tertiary education who created uh, created sculptures and then 3D scanned their their sculptures and then used 3D Bear to place those sculptures in different locations, actually all around Finland and Europe. And there was even a class in Thailand um that place those sculptures in thailand so you, you know you could use a, a lesson like that with your students or you know if you have um you know if you wanted to you could curate and say look i want you to create your own virtual um art exhibit using something that represents this theme and i want you to and, and have different students create that virtual art exhibit at different places you know, in the, in the village or, or all around, all, all around the country. So using a virtual art exhibit or virtual museums, if you're studying a certain period of time, this, you can have the students uh, look in um, on 3D objects to find different artifacts of whatever it is that you're studying and create a virtual museum and then a video explaining why they picked those artifacts that they could explain to other students or to, or to other adults. What you see? Um, having students work to improve the community is another great example. Um, in this example, students were asked to redesign a metro station or a transportation center uh, that to make it more um, more usable by kids. And then uh, the, the kids combined their ideas and then presented them to city officials. And some of the ideas were actually adopted by the city. So. Um, Having the kids do things that are, that um, you know that allow them to impact the community, or they could redesign a library, or they could redesign their own rooms, or they could design their ideal study space, or their ideal play space, or you know virtually you know or virtually any environment is a great way to spur kids' uh, creativity. So um, you know, here's some of the things that the uh, the kids came up with, you know, a moving walkway to enable uh, baby carriages, more visual decorations, play areas for kids, clearer signs indicating where uh, toilets were, um, more clocks, um, you know, uh, a pedestrian crossing to the garage. And these are, you know, some of these are really, really interesting ideas. And a couple of them were actually implemented by 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 the town. Uh, so augmented reality, you know, uh, as opposed to, to 
uh, virtual reality, you know, allows you to interact with the environment itself. If you were studying animals, you could have uh, and environments, you could have the kids go to a place and uh, using 3D Bear place animals and plants that could live in that place. Um, and then bring that back to back home or back to class and say, okay, here's an example of our park and the animals that could live in the park or the animals that don't live in the park. But they're, um, uh, but they're interacting with the environment itself. Um, you, know, you know, we know that in, in the traditional pedagogy where you're, um, you're talking about something and the students are listening, they're reading about something, they're taking tests, that's okay for facts and maybe basic understanding. But in the long run, the kids within a few months generally forget about the material that you're trying to teach them. But when kids work uh, kinesthetically and visually also, they tend to learn deeper. And some kids actually favor these other, these other media. And we find that with um, kids who are struggling in school with their traditional methods, sometimes they just shine here. And one of my favorite examples is a there's a nonverbal student um, in third grade, um, and the students were asked to redesign the library. And, you know, that student was, I mean, people made fun of him in the class generally, but that student's redesign of the library was head and shoulders above what all the other students did. And all of a sudden, that student was looked on with a new level of respect. And that kid's aide was crying at the end of the lesson. It, that, was a, that was a very moving lesson. Um, and then, you know, we, we all know that, you know, if you look at the different ways of learning, creation is the highest form of learning. And when we have kids create based on what they're learning, that learning becomes um, a lot deeper. So, um, you know, so, you know, you can, um, you can download the 3D Bear app. It's available on the app store. It's available on Google Play. Um, you know, if you wanted to use 3D Bear yourself, uh, what I'd recommend is, um, you know, go to your area of work or the area where um, where you currently are and, um, you know, recreate your own workplace and then um, and then publish it as uh, on, on 3D Bear. You know, and there's an option to publish if you're a registered user and you can publish it with the hashtag of uh, pound sign 3D Bear webinar, in which case uh, we can take a look at it also. And so it's, it's really used by kids to tell a story to show how they would solve a problem or how they could show mastery of something that, that, that you're, you're teaching them. Now, um, if you really want to learn, um, you know, to teach using 3D Bear, um, we have created a five 90-minute session academy. And if you're interested in one for a school or a group of people, the uh, QR code on the top right will take you to a page on the 3D Bear website. And if you scroll down that page, uh, you can make an appointment to talk about the academy. But the academy or teaches not just 3D Bear, but it teaches how do you teach using problem-based learning to really motivate students. So um, not only in say session one are we are we teaching you know how to use 3D Bear, but um, in session two how do you you know integrate technology and integrate integrate this, um, uh, 3D Bear into lessons, and then third how do you build lessons which really excite kids and deal with the problems that kids are concerned about, and then in session four. Um, how do you really engage kids? How do you embed social emotional learning and assessment into your lessons? And how do you create lessons? And in the fifth session, uh, you'll have created lessons and we'll be sharing those lessons with everybody um, who's also going into, into the uh, academy. So these, um, and I'll give you some more instructions about this in, in another slide or two, but these are five 90 minute sessions to teach not just 3D Bear, but how do you incorporate 3D Bear and problem-based learning and engagement and assessment 
for lessons that really in, um, really cause motivate kids and cause them to do the the hard work it takes to um, you know to really learn and and master their subjects. And so you know what can you know how would you go about doing this? Well, the QR the uh, QR code on the top right um, takes you to a spot on the website where you can um, download 3D Bear and you get a 30 day free trial of 3D Bear that you can work with. If you decide to continue, the ongoing cost of 3D Bear is 160 Indian rubles per month. Okay, and so you get 30 days free and if you decide to continue, you, you, you can continue or you can cancel uh, when the free subscription runs out or at any time. If you teach in a school and the school wants to buy, say, a classroom subscription, and a classroom subscription is for one year, and it covers the teacher and 60 students, okay, the cost is 15,000 um, INR, and uh, the QR code on the left will take you to the page where you can purchase a teacher subscription, in which case we'll set that up for you. And we'll talk to you about, you know, how you can learn more in, in terms of how to use 3D Bear. And it'll also provide you access to about 70 lesson plans for, for, um, for different subjects and different age groups of students. And then on the right, if you're a school and you're interested in sponsoring an academy for your school, uh, which is, again, five 90-minute sessions for about 15 teachers, and then you also get uh, six month, 50 student subscriptions for each of the teachers who attends. Um, there's the cost on, on, on the bottom and the QR code on the bottom right will take you to that page to purchase a, a school academy. And uh, we have, uh, I'm involved in many of the academies and we also have ambassador teachers in India um, who are also teaching the academies. And m many of the academies we do are, are partnering with an organization called Orange Slates. And so um, we can work with Orange Slates to, if there's a number of you that want to do academies, um, then we can, they, we can pull you, you together. And then um, if you go to the uh, 3D Bear website, um, www.3dbear.io, uh, we have tutorials on every aspect of using 3D Bear. So, um, I think I, you know, I, let me just go to that screen and let me stop share for a second and go to, um, you know, that page on 3D there. And, okay. And so here's the tutorial page on 3D bear. And so you see there's, you know, how to, how to, um, how to use 3D bear, how to use the basic tools, how to use the advanced tools uh tips and techniques um how to browse and interact with the air stories how to edit existing 3d uh stories that other people or you would yourself have, have created in the past um how to take a photo or a video um setting up your user um how to use the teacher dashboard um so there's a there's a whole series of lessons um on this uh 3d bear.io slash tutorials um page and then uh, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to what, what I wanted to cover. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And um, and if you'd like, you know, if you have uh, if you have additional questions, um, just uh, you know, put them into the chat, the um, the Q and A, and. Um, I'll stay on for a few minutes uh, to answer your questions. And I see that uh, Pekka, uh, one of the founders of 3D Bear, is on also. Um, and uh, he could answer. I'm not going to put him on the spot, but he could answer if he wanted to uh, some of the questions as well. So, oh, if our school uses its own content, can we protect our own intellectual property? Um, so, uh, that's a good, you know, so at, you know, the answer is yes. Okay. Um, if your school uses its own content, the content is yours, period. 
um, you don't have to share it with anybody. You can develop your own lesson plans. Uh, the the lessons that the, the the works that the kids develop isn't shared with anybody outside of the school, outside of actually the teacher um, and the classroom. So yes, uh, your own intellectual property um, is um, is protected. Uh, what is the maximum duration of a video which which can be created? So a video is about a minute, but we have people who've created much longer videos by creating a series of videos and then editing the videos with you know video editing software. Um, um, and a lot of the video editing software is is free. So it's just combining the videos to create a much longer um, video. Is the app? free trial only for 30 days okay so um so the app is free so you can download the app and use it for free even without registering or even without the 30-day trial and you can use it forever however the free app uh, contains about half of the 500 items that are automatically included in 3d bear uh, but if you do certain uh, types of operations like publish AR stories or like other people's AR stories or complete your profile, um, that gives you access to other objects and it also gives you access to Sketchfab. Um, so you can use points that you accumulate to um, to access the other capabilities of 3D there. So the, the free trial gives you access to everything for 30 days without having to do any other work like, you know, um, like modifying your profile um, or uh, sharing the stories that, that, that you create. Um, uh, but you can always use 3D there, it's, it, it's, it's free. Okay, how is augmented reality different from virtual reality? Uh, so, Augmented reality, you're looking through the camera of the device. So you're seeing the real world through your device, and then you're adding things to that reality, but you're interacting with the real world. In virtual reality, somebody has created something that exists completely separate from the real world. So you don't see the real world at all. So um it, you know when you put on those goggles generally as an example you're not seeing your room at all you're seeing this this world or this room or something that somebody has created so you're in a virtual space you're not in the real space and that's the real difference between augmented reality and virtual reality um okay what's the difference between 3d bear and adobe suites premiere so, um, so 3D Bear is an app that allows real beginners to create stories uh, that they can share with others. Whereas um, I've used the you know Adobe Suites 3D also, and that really requires uh, more technical skill. And, you know, there's a few things that you can do with Adobe Suites that you can't do with 3D Bear. And there's a few things that you can do with 3D Bear that you can't do with Adobe Suites. Um, but I would say if you want to start off, 3D Bear is an easier on-ramp and it can produce very, very powerful stories. Adobe Suites requires more skill. But once you have the skill, you can also do some really, really sophisticated uh, work with Adobe Suites. How do you export the videos? Um, as soon as you create a video, it's a video on your device. And then however you would share that video or edit that video, you can share um, you can share or edit that that video with anybody. Um, so um, so this, it's, so the videos are automatically exported to your device uh, that and you can share them. You can also publish them so they appear on the 3D bear feed and that's optional. How can we add individuals that suit our content? We have the images, but they are not 3D. Um, so that's kind of a more complex question right now. It's a really good question. Um, I find that the easiest way to add images is to uh, build this, you know, get the image up on your monitor 
and use that image then as the background for what you're creating. So if you, for example, um, have an image of, let's say, a mountain or a mountain town, you get that image up on your screen and then you add the 3D objects in front of that and then that becomes the video or the story that you're telling. Um, that I find is the easiest way to do it. We go through that in um, in the academy and there's actually something on that in one of the tutorials as well if you want to look at one of the advanced tutorials on our website. Okay, what if I have 300 students in each grade? If you have um, if you have 200 students, you know, if you have more than 60 students in each grade, um, then um, you should fill out the contact us information on 3D Bear, and we can uh, tell you how much um, it would cost for 200 students. Um, uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's it's if you if you take a look at the, you know, it was 160 INR for. Uh, that's per month. It was sorry, fifteen thousand INR for one year for sixty students. Uh, for two hundred students, I don't have the pricing in front of me, but I'm thinking that it's going to be around twenty five thousand INR for about two hundred students. Um, so, does three D Bear work with virtual reality? No, three D Bear is an augmented reality program. Um, now. Um, we at 3D Bear, um, we do create virtual reality simulations, primarily around vo vocational education. Um, so we do that, but those are really for specific schools. But the 3D Bear app is an augmented reality. Um, can this uh, be used with Windows? And um, I guess Pekka is answering that, but uh, I'll answer it also. The um, the 3D Bear app. Um, when, Windows does not have the augmented reality features that you need to do true augmented reality. Um, so, you know, Apple has its version, Google has its version that runs in Android. So to create scenes, um, you, um, you know, you need an Android device or an iOS device. But once you created the scene and you created the video, you can view that video um you know in um in, in any mode and uh no it's not a uh it's not web-based uh either um it's it's uh it, it's an app is this technology only for educational purposes or are there other uses as well you know it's anytime you want to create a story so as i mentioned um i'm kind of known uh to my friends and my family for creating jokes. Um, so if I go on a trip somewhere um, and I see something that's kind of funny, I'll do a, an augmented reality scene where I am and I'll post it to Facebook and Twitter. Um, so any type of digital storytelling that you want to tell, uh, you can do with, with 3D Bear and it's fun. I just, I really enjoy doing it. And I love it when my kids tell me that, uh, dad, nobody lets you your dad jokes because then I can point to them to people who have said, Mitch, this is really funny. So um, yeah, so there's a lot of other purposes. It's not just for education, but it was originally designed for education. Um, so can we use a picture or product and use it in the backdrop of the main screen? So certainly, so what you're using when you're creating the scene is you're creating the camera of the device. So if you point the camera of the device to a picture or a different backdrop, then you can construct your scene with that picture or, or backdrop as the background. So yes, you can use a picture or product uh, as the backdrop of the main screen while creating uh, your scene. Um, how do I get one or two examples done with your hand holding? So, um, so there's a, there's a, there, on the website, uh, the 3dbear.io website, um, there's an option to go to webinars. And in many of those, in, in virtually all the webinars that we've done, there are a lot of examples of, uh, of using 3D Bear. So I think um, that's a really good question. I think that's probably the best way at this point um, to look at uh, you know, e examples of, of how you do 3D Bear. 
you could probably Google, you know, 3D bear examples, and you could probably find YouTube videos. Um, I'm sure that you could find YouTube videos also of, of 3D bear if you go on, either on YouTube and you search, or you go on just a normal uh, web search and 3D bear examples. Um, you provide support. Now we're just going to let you flounder. I'm sorry, we don't provide any support. I'm just kidding. Um, so, um, so yes, on the on the website, um, there's an option uh, for you to type in a question and your email address. And um, if somebody happens to be live, we can answer it live. But if it's not live, it comes to a bunch of us, and we can answer your question for support that way. But in addition. Um, you know, as a school, um, if you purchased a school level subscription, we'll, we'll generally be talking to you to help you set it up for your school. So we help you with uh, implementation for a school um, or a classroom or a series of schools. And then we have the uh, website that offers support. And actually, most of the things that you run into, you're going to find um, on tutorials. And then I'll just say the third level is once you've used 3D Bear two or three times, you'll just get it and kids get it even faster. So um, I know every product says the same thing, but um, you really don't need much support. It's a, uh, it's, it, you know, when I say it's simple, it's not simple because it doesn't do much. 3D Bear is simple because it's a really elegant app that you can learn to use very easily. Um, so these are great questions. So thank you for ask, asking them. If we create any images in the software in Instagram or other social media platforms. So, um, so when you create using 3D Bear from within the app, you can share to a bunch of platforms. And I believe Instagram is one of them. But because, but or in addition to that, but because you're creating these images and they're and they be and they go to your photo roll, you know that you can create a photo from your device and use that photo or that video in Instagram or WhatsApp or any of the other social media platforms. So yes, anything that you create in 3D Bear, uh, you can share to social media. The price that are coming up with 200 is pricing us out. Um, what can I do? Um, so I think that the um, that it when you say the I'm not sure because I have eight classes with multiple of 200. Okay, so S. Kumar is you're the the person who has uh, 200 students. I if you can go to the contact us page on the webinar and just uh, sorry on our website 3dbear.io and do contact us then uh, we can set up a meeting to talk to you about um, how to, you know, how you can handle 200 students. And uh, we can come up with something that, uh, that can meet your needs, I'm sure. Um, are there webinars to turn 2D images to 3D? Uh, we do not have a webinar on how to turn 2D images to 3D, but um, we do have experts on how to create 3D objects. So if it turned out that you wanted a class on how to create 3D objects, um, again, just fill out that page on, on the uh, website and we can build a class for you. And then, um, and then thank you. You're, you're welcome. Thank you for, for acknowledging. Okay, when you have created some video or pic, can some other person edit it or is it not editable since published? So, um, when you create a video or photo, it goes to your photo roll and you can make it available to anybody. There's, I'm going to have two answers to this, by the way. So once, once the object has been a video or a photo on your photo roll, you can send it or make it available to some other person to use any photo editing software or any video editing software to edit it. So that's number one. But number two, and in one of the tutorials that goes through this, is that there's um, there's an option on 3D Bear which shows a gallery, which shows like five cards. And then once you click on those cards, that takes you to um, objects that, uh, you know, videos that you created or scenes that you created, and then you can edit those scenes directly in 3D Bear. 
if you publish a scene and you use some type of a hashtag with it with when you, when you publish it then somebody else can search for that hashtag if you give them the hashtag name and then they can find the scene that you edited they can click on it and then they can edit that scene also so yes um you know when you've created a video or pic or you've created a scene with something that we call ar stories um uh the both the the photo and video are editable and the story is editable if you make it available to others and then um can students work as a team on different devices so um so so <laughs> the interesting thing about that question is um it's it's a partial yes but the thing that we find is that when you use 3D Bear in a class, the actual process of creating on 3D Bear is the shortest part of the lesson. The longest part of the lesson is the students learning about whatever it is that that they're, you know you want them to, to learn, or problem solving around whatever the problem is that that you want them to solve. The creation on the three on through 3D Bear is going to take maybe 10 minutes at at absolute maximum 15 minutes for most of the things that the students are going to create. So you find that students working in groups, most of their work group, most of their working is done on the brainstorming and um, exploration part of the process. And the 3D bear part of the process is relatively quickly. So, so even if there's just one device that the students are sharing, um, students can very easily work in, in groups. Okay, so, so I have to take a picture photo or copy the image before sharing in different social media uh, platforms. Um, so automatically in 3D bear, there's that circle which takes a photo of the image. And then within 3D bear, you can share that image as well to many of the social media platforms or you can go to your camera roll and share it from there you don't have to go through a different operation in order to uh, share on social media platforms so i hope that answers your question as well uh, has anyone used it for gaming um i don't really think of 3d bear as a um as gaming, it's it's fun, so I think of it as play, but technically it's not a game. Um, and then let me just uh, share my screen. Um, so uh, so yes, here were um, here were the QR codes. Uh, the QR code to the top right is to download 3D Bear, register, and sign up for a 30-day free trial. Um, the one on the left is to purchase a, a 60 student one year subscription. If you have more than 60 students, you should fill out the contact us on www.3dbear.io and we can get back to you. Um, and then a school academy, um, which uh, provides a lot more subscriptions um, and also includes uh, that five session, 90 minutes per session uh, training on or professional development on not just how to use 3d bear but how to use design thinking problem-based learning and integrate multiple subjects and social emotion learning into your lessons so um so here are the the urls and you hit the nail we teach in brainstorming in school uh yes um oh but um okay so they will not have 3d bear at home but yes um if you it, for your students they can use 3d bear on any mobile device so when they go home if they don't have a phone a smartphone there's a good chance that their parents have a smartphone so they can use 3d bear on their parents smartphone using the same sign-on that you give them in class um so yes our students use 2d and 3d paint and then learn animations from there and then if, you, if they're creating a 3d object with 3d paint then um, there are ways of importing those objects into 3d bear and using them in scenes um how long will this webinar go so the webinar itself is is really over but i'm right now i'm just answering questions from people so um so no you don't have to stay on unless you're interested in the questions that that other people are are asking um 
So I, after I publish, so I'm that's I'm just sticking around to, add, to answer people's questions right now. After I publish my AR story in 3D Bear, I myself can edit it anytime I want, right? Uh, yes. Uh, and what do you know? I answered a question in one word, which is so unlike me. So uh, thank you for asking a question that I could answer in one word. So yes, uh, the avatars need more clothing. Um, so there is an option in, in 3D Bear for you to create your avatar. And there's there's uh, certain ways of dressing the avatars. Um, and uh, over time, we'll probably add to those capabilities um, and give people the rights to add, you know, different color clothes um, and, and different objects to their avatars. But uh, that's one of the things I didn't have time to go through, but students or anybody can create their own avatars uh from uh pictures of themselves or avatars of photos like they could have a, a, a you know a photo of their dog and they can create an avatar out of out of, out of their dog um no if if people um no because it, it, the question is will it double the number of licenses that i need of people if they take it home and no you're going to give your students a class code and you're going to give them a sign-in and they can use that class code and that sign-in from any device. So, um, so they'll be able to, uh, um, you know, you will not double the number of licenses. Uh, the students have the rights to use 3D Bear on any device. They could go to a friend's house and they could use it at a friend's house. Uh, they could go on vacation. They could use it from their aunt's phone, their uncle's phone. They could use it anywhere, just signing in with the class code and the student code that, that, that you're going to give them. Um, and they'll be able to uh, use it. Um, so I'm looking and it looks like, uh, so there's the, it looks like there's, there's no more questions. So, um, so thank you all. I'm going to uh, stop the recording. Um,